Do you sometimes eat too much and feel guilty about it afterwards? It could be because you're suffering from something called binge eating and it's likely preventing you from achieving your fitness goals. In this video, I'll explain five easy steps that'll help you prevent binge eating and get you closer to your ideal body weight. This video was actually inspired by a few of my clients, namely Alex, Jeff and Jack, who all came to me looking to lose a minimum of 25 pounds so that they could have more energy, more confidence, and be better examples of health for their loved ones. These are the exact same five steps that I took them through to help them regain control of their eating and lose a combined 150.4 pounds. Now, before we get into the five steps, I want to tell you who I am and why I think you can listen to me. I'm Joe Johheim, and I am the co-owner of defaultkings.com, where I've helped over 502 guys achieve and maintain their ideal body weight. I make these videos to share my experiences from working with individuals of all different backgrounds, from NFL athletes to soccer moms, so that way you can get in shape and stay in shape effortlessly, no matter your starting point or your individual needs. With that being said, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and let's get into the five steps. Step number one, change your self definitions. The great Tony Robbins is quoted as saying this, the strongest force in the human existence is the desire to remove remain in alignment with our own self definitions. To translate that for you, this is basically saying how you define yourself is how you're going to behave and how you behave is going to create your reality for you. So if you define yourself as lazy, you are very likely to act lazy and therefore live a lazy existence. If you label yourself as a junk foodaholic, you are very likely to eat a lot of junk food and bear the repercussions of that, whether it be excess body weight or excess body fat. If you label yourself as a binge eater, you are far more likely to binge eat and again, deal with the repercussions of that. So if you're somebody that struggles with placing these negative self identities, or negative definitions and labels on yourself, here's some exercises that you can do to overcome that. Take out a sheet of paper and a pen and ask yourself these questions and answer them in full and write them all down. Question number one, what are the negative labels and definitions that I place on myself? Question number two, what are the positive labels and definitions that I place on myself? And question number three, who am I being called to be. Once you've taken the time to write out all of the answers to these, start behaving in alignment with the answers that you had for question number two and question number three. And lastly, do your best to never refer to yourself, label yourself, or define yourself as the things that you wrote down in response to question number one. Step number two, avoid BTS syndrome. This is when people eat purely out of boredom, thirst, or stress. Boredom can happen in between Zoom calls or in between work meetings when you stagger on over to the pantry or to the break room and grab a big bag of potato chips or some other unhealthy snack. You should not only remove these snacks, but you should also replace them with another behavior that will keep you occupied because this is stemming from boredom. So instead of that stroll to the pantry or the break room for a snack, try going for a walk instead. Thirst happens due to dehydration, of course. However, you may have heard that the body often misinterprets thirst cues as hunger cues. A lot of times you're not actually hungry, you're just thirsty. So next time you're hungry, try drinking some water first and seeing if those hunger cues don't subside. Lastly, stress triggers the release of the hormone cortisol, which can easily throw off your usual hunger cues and lead to you eating way past the point of being full. Here's what you can do. Next time you are hungry, ask yourself if you are genuinely hungry or you're just bored, thirsty, or stressed. Step number three, find your ravenous window. This is the time period of day where you are most hungry. Contrary to popular opinion in the health and fitness world, breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. Lunch is not the most important meal of the day. And dinner is not the most important meal of the day. Your body does not care when you eat and it does not metabolize food any differently depending on the time of day that you eat it. But your body does have a circadian rhythm, which is just a fancy way of saying a hormone cycle. And this circadian rhythm releases your hunger hormones or your hunger cues for you. So you may notice that you're somebody who in the morning is really hungry, or maybe you're the opposite. Maybe in the morning, you're not hungry at all. Neither of these are wrong. It's just about figuring out which one works for you, finding your ravenous window. Now this circadian rhythm and ravenous window can be manipulated by things such as changing your sleep schedule or introducing appetite suppressants such as nicotine, caffeine, or carbonated beverages. But I don't really recommend manipulating that cycle until you have a firm understanding of what that naturally looks like for you. Now the way to find this ravenous window would be using some sort of note-taking device to track when you feel hungry for the next three to five days. After three to five days of tracking the times at which you're normally hungry throughout the day, you should be able to find some averages that lead to you concluding what time of the day you are most 
hungry. Again, that might be the morning for you. It might be the afternoon or it might be the evening. It doesn't matter when it is. None of those are wrong. What you want to do though, is once you've found this ravenous window is stack all of your calories or the vast majority of them into that specific window. By stacking the majority of your calorie intake into your ravenous window, you're going to avoid binge eating in that time period like you may normally do or in the periods of the day following that. Hey, what's going on? Hope you're enjoying the video. Real quick, if you are a family-minded man that wants to learn more about how my team and I will work with you one-on-one -on -one using our default actions framework to help you lose 10% of your body weight for good and how we'll refund you in full if you gain a single pound back after working with us. All you have to do is go to www.defaultkings.com and book a free brainstorm chat with one of the fat loss experts on my team so they can tell you exactly how we can possibly help you. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Step number four, prioritize eating protein dense real foods. The actual food you are eating is going to have an impact on whether or not you binge eat. This is because your food choices impact your hunger cues, specifically protein. This is the most satiating of the three macronutrients, carbs, fats, and protein. All that means is you are going to feel more full after eating protein than you would after simply eating carbohydrates or fats. Since you're more full, you're obviously less likely to binge eat or overconsume calories elsewhere. Also, proper protein intake will help you balance your ghrelin, which is the I'm hungry hormone, and your leptin, which is the I'm full hormone, levels. So a good rule of thumb for you the next time you sit down to eat is make sure at least half of your plate is made up of a protein source food. Additionally, try to eat that protein source of food first before moving on to the carbohydrates and the fats that you have in the meal on the side. Step number five, track your progress. What is measured is improved. If you start tracking your calories and your protein intake daily using apps such as MyFitnessPal, you'll be able to directly see how big of a negative impact binge eating is having on those goals. Additionally, you'll be able to see how the strategies that you implemented from this video are allowing you to decrease your total calorie intake and increase your daily protein intake which will ultimately lead to you losing more fat and losing more weight. Also, start stepping on the scale every single day. When you are forced to face that number every single day, you are much less likely to run away from it or sweep it under the rug and actually change your behavior and stop binge eating. That way, you can move towards the body weight that you're after. Lastly, take progress pictures weekly. You see yourself in the mirror every single day. So the progress on the day-to-day -day doesn't look like much. But after weeks or months of applying the things that you learned in this video, you'll be able to look back back and see real tangible progress from those pictures that you have. To wrap this video up, the five steps to stop binge eating are one, change your self definitions. Two, avoid BTS syndrome. Three, find your ravenous window. Four, prioritize protein dense real foods. Five, track your progress. If you're a guy that wants to learn more about how my team and I will work with you one on one and use our default actions framework to help you permanently lose 10% of your body weight in just 12 weeks or less and how we'll refund you in full if you gain a single pound back after working with us, all you have to do is go to defaultkings.com and book a free brainstorm chat with one of the fat loss experts on my team so they can tell you exactly how we can possibly help you achieve these goals. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe so it can be pushed to other people that might need it. And while in this video, I went over how to stop binge eating in one of my recent videos, I covered why I think you don't need meal plans for weight loss. Check that out here.